Well, hello. Once again, you have found a Texas Steampunk Connection. Broadcasting to you throughout the multiverse, Steamverse, from our various bunkers and airships. With me, as always, is Fax, Gentleman Adventurer. Hello, hello. <laughs> with me is Jack from Steam Chest. Hello. <laughs> and you have with us today, Master Blue Stocking from <laughs> Steampunk Dollhouse Podcast. So once again, we are here to talk oh, probably about Steampunk, most likely. That's what this is about. Thank you for listening to the Texas Steampunk Connection. All right. Love that intro. Here we are. Thanks. That's a great intro. <laughs> Thank you, Flavio, wherever Thank you, you are. Flavio. <sighs> All righty. How, How are you doing? Last two weeks. Oh, busy. Lots of reading. Lots yeah, of yeah. <laughs> study, study. Uh, happy Valentine's Day. Uh, it was just about to be Valentine's Day uh, after last show. Um, today is Tuesday. Two, 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 two. Which Lots is uh, pretty important. Because <laughs> it's also really. a Tuesday, so our Gregorian calendar is just going nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Mick and Rita. Hello. Tuning in, our favorite viewers. Uh, are they viewers? Is that what we call them? Yeah, they're called viewers because they're viewing. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's weird. I still have, you know. Podcast on the brain? Radio. I mean, I mean, they could subscribe. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. Where's the like button? Like and subscribe. I know they removed the dislike button. <laughs> yeah. Just as well. Yeah, Too I don't, negativity. my self-esteem couldn't handle that. <laughs> I don't know, but now I don't know if it's the right video to watch if I need to use the pipe wrench on the toilet or not. <laughs> Makes You're going to have to read difficult. the comments. I, mm. <laughs> also, being a YouTuber myself, I'm just like, this is yeah. a bad thing. Yeah. Okay, this is going to be a fun show. Uh, nice. We've been talking yeah. about it for a couple of days here um, because... If you've been watching our show, we really haven't haven't had an easy time finding new steampunk stuff happening in the media or big events uh, to talk about. Although, now that I think about it, there are a couple of events coming up that we do need to mention. I'll just look it up on my calendar here. Uh, but this weekend is Steampunk Upriver Mardi Gras 2022. Wow. Which That's is in Jefferson, Texas. They're celebrating Mardi Gras in a very steampunk style. I don't know entirely what that uh, involves, but that sounds cool. Uh, just look go for uh, www.mardigrasupriver.com and find out more if you're in that area and then next weekend like the first weekend in march yes yeah is a uh, wild wild west steampunk con 10 which is outside of texas that's uh in arizona but it is a major steampunk event for the country and uh you've been to that one haven't you i, I have not Flavio almost went uh that's right he had plans, and then the guy he was driving out with uh, canceled last minute. Yeah. And so he didn't get to go. It's too bad. It's okay. These days, it's not the same thing. It's now at a hotel. It's not at the wonderful recording place. It's like, that's right. Why even go? I, oh, no, I'm not going to say that. But <laughs> after, after, <laughs> after going to Wild Bill West and it's heyday, I'm waiting to see what they do. It's a long drive. It's like a thousand miles for me or something to go. <laughs> so it's even worse now that I live in Austin versus like Midland, Texas. But um, I'm waiting to see how it progresses and how it grows again, because it's like they started all over. And so it's like a completely new. Yeah. It's the same. It's the same people. So they've not like they don't know what they're doing with conventions, but their convention space has drastically changed. And um, I'm, I'm hoping they could still get the poll that they're used to uh, getting. And if that's the case, they might be able to start, um, what's the right word for it, not justifying, but being able to petition for the area in which they were using prior, um, if they can 
you can get a whole bunch of people to go back there because I think it got bought out. It was, became a private organization. Ah, uh, um, yeah, yeah. That sucks. So it's no longer it's no longer a heritage. It's a heritage site, but it's a. You don't know how they quite pull that off. Yeah, the weird. Oh, that sucks. Yeah. Well, it was a really they're... cool site. That was half the reason for going. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was sort of a wild west kind of town. Uh, it wasn't really a facade. It was like a real. Like mm -hmm. the buildings were, you go inside. They were real buildings. Real ghost um, town? Most of those were actually pulled from other towns, moved here. And stolen. Were, yes. Well, no, not stolen. <laughs> they were purchased, I'm sure. Talk about highway <laughs> robbery. <laughs> <laughs> Took the bank. The whole bank. <laughs> when you can't it's break like, in, just take the whole thing. That's a good well, scene. Yeah. So, well, are they trying to figure out a new location or are they just going to be hotel bound from now on? At the moment, now? they're hotel bound in the area. So, okay. I mean, there's some, there's still a lot of good things in that area to, to go do. Uh, one of the things I always wanted to do if I was going out there again was go to the missile silo um, exhibit where they actually have you go down into the actual warhead silo. And it's the same area where they recorded uh, first contact. Uh, Star Trek First Contact, so you can go touch the same part of the you know, missile that <laughs> that uh, Picard did, if you're into that kind of thing. And I also mean, going up to the area was always fun, because you got to go through Tombstone, um, and there's a couple other little towns you could go through, so you get that. You get, It was always this little trip of going up to it, where you're just, you could be in character, or get really into character, or like purchase things along the way they build your character as you go as well and um so it got you in the mood to be in the in a, in a western and uh it, so i mean it would still be really fun again for sure just because of the the travel going to and from but uh sadly you don't get to have the wonderful space they did before and uh, yeah well but, i mean the hotel they have is a really nice hotel it's not like they picked something you know cruddy or anything afterwards just to right off their name they are trying to stay very legitimate and i'm looking forward to them being able to uh to grow again in the future yeah i mean with something like wild west you expect it to have when you that, could go yeah take pictures with a sh with one of the trains from the wild wild west tv show <laughs> and go into a chapel and go hang out at the bank yeah rob the bank um <laughs> Go into a literal saloon and have you know steam powered giraffe and the cog is dead, and oh the the English guy the English rapper guy um, Professor Elemental or Professor Elemental MC the whole thing, and um, it was it was very fantastic and uh, I'm I'm looking forward to them being able to pull something off like that again because they were able to pull a lot of big names for for their convention in the middle of Arizona, yeah so. Well, maybe next year. That is maybe the plan. Be, yeah. <laughs> it's always think, next year. <laughs> I think you'd be well uh, well serviced to go, even though it's not in that mm -hmm. awesome event space. I think you're still going to have a great time. You're um, going to get a lot of people from the Las Vegas area coming into that one. And you get a lot of people from the uh, the West Coast that you don't normally see at conventions going to that one. Um, there's also another one like up in Idaho. I know it sounds weird, but th that you get a lot of people from the Idaho convention circuit coming to that one as well. So you're pulling a lot of people that you don't normally run into uh, at that convention. And so I mean, we made a lot of friends and uh, they had a couple of movies uh, basically come out and premiere what they wanted to do in very steampunk ways. Uh, one of them was Ether. And uh, sadly, that guy the director could never get any money backing from like Warner brothers or something to completely fulfill his 15 minute movie. He made that looked spectacular. Aww. And uh, actually we own one of the movie props that was made by uh, airship Isabella. And as a, like this awesome glove <laughs> piece that, of leather. And it looks like it's almost made of like, it's got like digital circuitry um, uh, melted into it so it's a very gorgeous piece and like we were really looking forward to something coming of this we even pushed it with our box we uh mm -hmm. advertised the hell out of it and sadly they just couldn't there's, there's just no money in this I'm like yeah and then all of a sudden you hear you see look at it, four years five years later and everything has some sort of steampunk pull to it like if it's if it's 1800s there's always some quirky dude with something quirky in it uh you've got I mean, how we've been talking about how many shows. Yeah, on this, on this. Elements. yeah. Yeah. So 
it may not be true steampunk straight in, but it's definitely got a big element of steampunk in it. And uh, I think they really lost out on having a, a, sh- a show that could have, have replaced the, well, have you seen the movie Wild Wild West as a, <laughs> as, as the pinnacle point of, of steampunk? And uh, yeah. Because nobody wants to use that as an explanation, but it really is the best. It's, it's the best explanation to explain it to Western yeah. culture. I mean, and I try to use City of Lost Children, but nobody's seen that. So oh, I know. I love that show. <laughs> Almost feel like I'm on that set right here with the way my lighting is and all the stuff behind me. But uh, All right. Uh, well, any more facts? Uh, that, uh, that, those are the things that, the, the big things that are, that are coming up. Uh, <laughs> dog is going crazy. Just a second. He, he's got something to say. Apparently. I know Alcon's coming up here shortly, if not already. Well, Um, and the festivities for Asylum are starting this weekend. mm -hmm. Uh, Asylum and Lincoln, yeah, they're starting this weekend. And And some sort of gas light? Yeah, it's a, they're having a, like a concert type event, a ball, I think, on my birthday on the 26th. Yeah. (gasps) Happy birthday. Yeah. Couldn't really fly to Lincoln for, you know, as much as I would have enjoyed that. So it'd be hard for me to fly with all my gear. Considering half of it would not be allowed on an airplane. I, the stuff that I took for the last time I went, it was heavy enough. Yeah, my bag was was a nightmare, especially because I had three different trains I had to take to get from London to Lincoln. It was, it was bad. <laughs> it not even take that much. Yeah. It's like, especially trying to like, carry a hat through customs that, or just wear, wearing a hat on an airplane, then having it being as intricate as mine just becomes a very big problem really fast. That's why you ship it. To someone that's on the other end. I don't trust anyone else with that hat. <laughs> I don't trust airport security. Are you kidding? <laughs> and then there's my hat to consider. Oh, no. Actually. I found out why my dog was barking. Why? The mailman is finally here. Oh, wow. Wow, really? That, that is not unusual at the moment. They are working like so much overtime in my neighborhood to deliver the mail. He doesn't deliver the mail till after dark to my house. Aww. Usually. That sucks. Poor guy. Jack, what are you... Blue Stocking said she was not going to get political tonight, but... Louis <laughs> Toy, get the hell out. I'm not. So, I was, if she I was, does get political, I got my helmet. <laughs> I was going to be non-political tonight. Oh, so uh, <laughs> the mailman came and brought me a birthday present. Okay. My birthday was just uh, a week ago. Oh, that's right! Happy birthday! Happy and birthday! And Blue Stocking, you're about to have a birthday too. <gasps> yes, forty-six on the twenty-sixth. Yep. Last sixes. By Professor Elemental, who we were just <laughs> talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know he wrote a book. Thank you, wifey. Aww. Happy birthday. I hope it's good. It better be good. <laughs> it better be good. <laughs> I, I've met him in person. He's very entertaining. He is. He is very entertaining. Especially when he's <laughs> literally. <laughs> Five whiskeys into a into being an MC, he's he's barely st- able to stay on stage, and yet he is still like completely there with his jokes. I've I don't think never I'd be seen able to remember life. all the lyrics uh, <laughs> that far into my cups. He's bringing it into your cups. <laughs> Anybody drinking something interesting? Oh, I'm um, doing the same. My apothic. I don't have anything with me right now. I have somehow. You know, actually, I've no, that's not true. I have peanut butter pretzel stout that I talked about. I don't know, a couple months ago. Yeah. And that 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 last beer sitting in the fridge, that, uh, <laughs> sitting there lonely all by itself, sitting at the very back of the fridge, just waiting. Waiting. You drunk all the other ones. Is it any good? Oh yeah. Oh, uh, is it? it? It's sweet. It's a little desserty, but you definitely get. Peanut butter and pretzel. Yep. Well, I have I have two things that are alcoholic that are near <laughs> Digging me. Digging under your desk um, for booze? <laughs> like you're in your dorm room? <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
So I have 91% isopropylene. Oh my God. Or we, we, we have some spice drama in a cask here. Yeah, okay. Oh, no. That's, I yeah, would go this, for that. This, this is my first choice. That that one's if I run out. So is it, uh, we got steam pumps? Steam pups? Steam pups. Yeah, this is my mouthy boy. <laughs> oh, he's got a lot to say. Out the window with the mailman. I got to make sure the mailman knows. Yeah, got to make sure the mailman knows who's boss. <laughs> we came upon him while we were walking one day and all my dogs are very friendly but very forward and i saw fear in his eyes oh, that male no. man has had some dogs before probably <laughs> yeah bad about that. i'm sure it has not gone well i couldn't even imagine because we have a mailman that walks his rounds and yeah yeah we've got some real rowdy dogs on this street i don't know how he does it i um uh... Don't have a story for that, like I thought I did. <laughs> <laughs> All that build up and then just usually nothing. usually when the UPS man comes out to my mother's house when uh, we were living there, um he got really smart. He was an older gentleman and uh I mean he was still in like better shape than I was because all UPS guys apparently are just like felt. They're jacked. Uh, they're, yeah. yeah, they're jacked. <laughs> and they, they they get basically sweat all day. And uh but he carried a burger. And he would give all the dogs on his route like a bite of this burger. And so literally <laughs> Zoe, our, our war Smart. dog, our war dog, uh, do, um, weenie dog, would come running up. <laughs> little, you know, she's about 10, 15 pounds. And she'd just stop and just wait for that burger. <laughs> and then pet and he would drop off the thing. And like my wife, my mom's just like, this, this dog is trained. I, I don't have a, like, that's the one thing if, if, Someone broke into our house and they waved a stake around. We would we would be out of out of stuff. Yep. <laughs> yeah. It's the key. Give them a stake. Well, at least the, with the dog, I have a chance. My cats, my cats are just going to hide under the bed. <laughs> just <laughs> let the robbers do what they want to do. I have a cat. Her name is here. She. Um, I'm, I'm actually thinking about buying a laser pointer for my pistol. And all I'd have to do is just point it at the guy. And the cat would do everything else. <laughs> she is nuts. She gets she gets all sorts of um, what we what we call it when she gets all sorts of nuts. Zoomies. It's a zoomies, or she gets rap, or she gets hoppy, gravity. <laughs> She's just all of a sudden it's like you, it's like you took a static electricity the electricity charge and just zap the you know hit the cat with a freaking taser or something. <laughs> she gets nuts for about 30 seconds and she's tearing the carpet and Aww. running around like a carpet shark. And and it, literally her tail goes up in this little dorsal fin. And just, yeah. Argh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they all do that. The tail goes straight up in oh, the yeah. air and then they just, yeah. Well, hers has like a curve to it. Oh, does so it? It looks like, a, it looks like a, a dorsal fin rolling through the carpet and her ears Aww. go back and she'll tear up anything and she'll grab it. And it's just like, you, you could tell like the little radar in her brain is just going nuts looking for something to attack. And then she like decide to home in on something and just all in. But uh, yeah, no, I think that would be a perfect weapon. Just a laser pointer and some cats home defense weapon. Welcome to our new podcast, Texas steam pet connection. <laughs> hey, that's a big deal in steampunk. There's a comic book artist in San Antonio that has a, uh, comic book series called steam pets <laughs> i think i've actually heard of that now See, that, we've yeah. now weaved and then we'll and we'll sure. that one in See, uh, it all comes back around. anthropomorphic uh puppies and kitties yeah yeah that's familiar i think i've heard of that before <laughs> we actually have um given out t-shirts and uh actually uh, it was one of our only limited time hoodies that we did had all of our dogs on the back and unfortunately most of them have passed on but we had all of our dogs as Aww. characters on our on our airship and like yeah you know, and so it was it was a very nice shirt but it's hard to look at sometimes these days oh no. yeah <laughs> so sad it's like a memorial wall now than anything else okay well <laughs> we know it's a good memorial. well dax you had something special that you wanted to cover start covering yes. I was, yeah, I was hoping that you uh, want to cover it too. I'm very oh, excited. Yeah, yeah. You know, one, of, one of my favorite things uh, about in, any of my hobbies, <laughs> uh, <laughs> one of the things that got me into steampunk is getting to dress up in fun costumes. Mm -hmm. 
but I am also poor or cheap, <laughs> depending on how you want to play it. And so I thought thrifty. tonight. You like to call it thrifty. Frugal. Thrifty is, is definitely the word we're going to use. It's anti draconian. Like to, uh, start tonight talking about thrifting for your steampunk costume. And there's a lot to talk about. We're only going to talk about belts and accessories tonight because oh. everybody's looking for those, I'm sure. And uh, Blue Stocking is an expert on belts and accessories. <laughs> at least it was her idea. So that's what we're going to go with tonight. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spit out a lot of opinions and suggestions and uh, antics. I, I, I want to I state up, up front that these are just my opinions. If I suggest, you know, never do this, this thing or never buy this thing and you've already bought that thing and you love it, okay. You know, who cares what I said? If you're making it work, cool. I don't want anybody to be mad at me or offended that I said a thing that you love is the wrong thing. But it hasn't worked for me and I'm just... Let's start a conversation about it, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's, that's uh, where we want to start out with this. That'll probably be more important for like shirts and pants and other things. Accessories are pretty wide ranging. Yeah, we'll just get into it. So uh, take it away, Blue Stocking. <laughs> <laughs> and go. No pressure. Okay. Now, this came about when we were talking about this because the belt that I created when I was creating my steampunk library and persona and i was trying to come up with you know i got the outfit but i was trying to figure out the belt and to be fair and i will post links for this later if anybody wants the links for them i'll show you the belt but everything that's on my belt was actually acquired through including the belt was through etsy um because i like supporting the the small uh businesses the little you know business people on etsy and there's some really cool craftsmen so i was going to show you all what i have what i put together and you know i had to put together you know, little bits at a time because some of it's not cheap but this is what i have so the whole belt is from etsy um, because I'm a librarian, I wanted to play into that. And so this was one of the first things I got. This was a, a builder on Etsy who makes these. They're little lamps. Oh, wow. Yeah, see? Ooh. Yeah, they're little belt lamps. And they've got, I'm missing a vial. I lost one, but there's little vials on the side. And they have, um, <clears throat> yeah, I've got to replace that one. But there's, you know, they've got the copper. We've got the, you know, all the cool little elements to it. And he's got some that have, um, there, some of them have different faces. He's got one that has a uh, Cthulhu <laughs> on the face. And, you know, you can get, to, yeah, there's different colored lights too. So, all, like I said, I could post the links for all of these. Um, so that was one of my favorite purchases. And then I had to get keys because i've got the light of knowledge and the keys to knowledge um <laughs> and then this one was also fun too it was pocket watch holder with a little and it's just a decorative pocket watch it's not the real thing but i've got the little pocket watch and then doot, doot, doot. this thing is so heavy you wouldn't even believe nice it holder. yeah I, this whole thing yeah the holder like i said i can share the links with you so you can go pick them up because that one wasn't expensive and then i got the little pouch that you know everybody needs their little with the gears it's steampunk you know it's steampunk because it has gears <laughs> but it's got Put some little... gears on it and roll with it <laughs> i'm fine with it yeah and then it's got you know just a little and it opens right up and it held all my stuff and then the actual belt itself the reason that it was so valuable to me was because it comes with this on the back it's got two pouches on the back the one that hold yeah. that you know can hold the cell phone and then this one which i had pamphlets that i would wear that would come up out of the back about your rights as a library or as a library user and a reader in america so i would carry those around and pull out a pamphlet and hand it to people at steampunk november so that was that is my very very heavy belt <laughs> yes but Everything was from Etsy. Um, it's all quality. I've had it since 2017. I've worn it a lot. The pieces have held up. Like I said, that lamp has been going since 2017. 
<laughs> usually, yeah, and usually when I'm out, I have the lamp lit. So I don't know what powers it. I have no idea. If I think it's a, yeah, I think it's just a regular battery. Yeah, there's a little thing on the back of it that flips open and it's got a battery in it. So I'll share those links after the episode so you can, because I pulled up my Etsy page so y'all can, so I can show y'all where I got everything. But that's my belt. And I did have a pencil holder on it. I mean, it's a library and I needed pencils, but it got in the way. There was just too much stuff. So I ended up getting a harness that has pencil holders in it. <laughs> I like the fact you had to get a harness for the pencils. Like, it's, like this is how you build your your gear. It's like, it's like you start off with one piece, and you're like, I really like this, and I stick it on the belt. And then you like get another well, piece, and you're like, you stick it on the belt. You're like, I'm running out of room and belts. Yeah, I didn't have enough room. Let's and the belt. The uh, harness maker. It's in. It's the one that's in my picture at the start of the show. Um, she's on Etsy too. She had the harness, but they had bullets in it. I'm like, that's. I'm a librarian. I don't really need. And I'm like, can you put pencils in there? And she did. She <laughs> sent it to me with little, like the little yellow pencils in it. And it was, yeah, it was great. I had these pencils coming off of my harness, but the problem was they kind of messed up my shirt a little bit, but it was still, it was, yeah, it, but it looked cool. It was really, it was super cute. So yeah, Etsy is a great place to get this stuff because you're going to get quality items that are going to last so, yeah, and Brita's right. The best outfits, they come together bit by bit over time. You just, you find your stuff and you build it and add on and switch out and, you know, find what so works for you. So my problem with Etsy. Okay. The problem is if it Here it comes. Is that I am a cheap ass. <laughs> and even though I know that that stuff is quality, handmade stuff by an actual artist, up oh, and... <laughs> and, and I'm like, okay, well, what can I get that's a couple steps down from that, but will work? What what can I start with? Actually, move into that? Amazon is a weirdly plentiful place for steampunk stuff. Bezos. Okay. <laughs> oh, I, I've got you can idea. actually find most of the stuff through <clears throat> Amazon and then go online and then, yeah, now, go find the name and find the other actual retail yeah. outlet. I mean, it depends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, okay, like the keys that I like the keys that I got. That was just somebody was selling a bag of keys, a bag of just fake keys. So I bought those and I bought a um a motorcycle because it's actually it's a, a just a keep uh. What's the word I'm looking for? Fob. Yes, just a key, a clip-on key fob, and then I attach a the keys dongle. to it. Don't yeah, it's a dongle. It's my dongle. It's a fongle. <laughs> I feel like if it's a dongle, it has to plug into a USB port. I, that's how I feel about no, too. No, unfortunately, it does not plug in. So I mean, like I said, that was those were just a pack, a bag of keys I bought off Etsy for five dollars, just cheap brass oh, keys. Nice. Yeah, that's yeah, that's what I'm saying. And then I got the fob and attached them to that. So I think the pencil holder was the leather pencil holder was twenty five dollars. You know, sorry, such a great name for something. It's like what? it's like a good curse word. Oh, you cheap bag of keys, you cheap ba <laughs> bag of brass keys. <laughs> it's oddly specific, and yet it's definitely not a happy thing to call somebody. You look just like the piss boy. <laughs> Exactly. I will so. say this: those keys that I got off Etsy, they are actually also on Amazon, but I got them cheaper on Etsy, and I didn't have to buy them from Amazon. So, yep. yeah. Nice. So that's the other thing about Etsy is you can get a lot of the same stuff. You're, but I mean, that's that's just me. You know, everybody. Oh yeah. Has yeah. different things that they you know that they're looking for, and I think you wanted to focus in on thrift stores, though, didn't you? That that is where <laughs> I. That's my go-to. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Thrift stores, and uh, so. You were talking about belts. Obviously, if you want to attach anything to your belt, you're going to need a belt. <laughs> <laughs> you so, need a place to start. <laughs> um, I, I, I definitely suggest go to your thrift stores in your local area. Get to know which ones are good and which ones are a waste of time. Uh, last year, you know, I, I got sent off to Salt Lake City over and over and over. <laughs> I spent a lot of time driving around looking in thrift stores. Um, they have some shoddy ones and they had at least one or two really interesting ones. Um, <laughs> unfortunately I didn't want to fly back with a bunch of stuff I'd found. So yeah, it had to but I can tell Mail you it to yourself, That's finding... what I'm saying. ship it to yourself. <laughs> and then you have more stuff at home. 
I'd be paying more for shipping than I paid for the thing. But then oh, you'd have true. stuff waiting for you when you get home, and it'd be yeah, very like exciting. <laughs> <laughs> um, so get, getting a belt at a thrift store, I, th- there's tons of them, and they uh, they run the gambit. Um, I suggest, you know, what, what I've been looking for is just a regular leather belt. And uh, these are, in Austin, these are re- relatively hard to find. Mm-hmm. Most of the belts I found in town uh, on the back was stamped Made in China. And I can tell you, my my first suggestion, if you see Made in China, put it back. Because it's not leather, it's some kind of plastic, and it's not going to hold up, and you will be unhappy. Um, but I found this, uh, this belt. It's it's not really ideal. It's just a flat piece of leather with a bunch of um, nautical themes on it with this big goofy <laughs> uh, buckle that I'm not going to use. But I was shopping for straps. So I had to take this apart and use it for straps in, in making something else. So that worked well for me. Um, I found another one here. Same place. Um, this is by Dockers. It says genuine leather on the back. And it's it's a really nice belt. I, That's uh, a thick belt. Look at that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it, it's got some some, heft, some to heft to it. it. Yeah. And uh, yeah. I bought that to chop up into straps too, but I don't know if I can. It's too nice. <laughs> it's too nice. I, I could uh, get to that again. I, I don't know. But yeah, short of no. going to Etsy, that this is a good place to start on a budget, on the, the thinnest budget. Uh, this, these each of these belts was probably three dollars. I'm sorry, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just you said thin, so I'm just you're going like waffer thin. Waffer thin. <laughs> um so yeah, that's 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 my first suggestion. Jack, you wanna you have anything to uh so thin <clears throat> being or I have a lot of I have a lot of things to say whether it's relevant or not. Let's see. Um <laughs> it was like thrifting about four years ago and, and before was fantastic. And then the thrift stores knew what they had, or at least knew that they had people who were willing to pay more than the, what they were being, you know, they, they upcharged like here in Austin. I don't even want to shop at like, if it's a home brewed thrift store or a, uh, a lion's club. Yes. I'll go there. Cause I know my money's going to good places. Um, but like goodwill, Goodwill is expensive now. It's changed, yeah. And it it yeah. is not the same place. They still, un- of course, they still underpay their employees. Um, if they have, if they have blind or deaf or um, have any type of disability employee there, they're getting paid well below minimum wage. So I'm just like, where's this money going? It's obviously going to the CEO who likes to pay himself a lot of money every year, and it's documented. So no, it's um, interesting how a uh, not-for-profit company mm-hmm. can be so profitable yes yep exactly and yeah. being a tax person I know how they're getting away with that yeah and yeah, yeah getting all their stuff for free or highly discounted from other stores and then basically selling it for the price they have it or had it beforehand i mean everyone buying it because they think it's on sale um yeah, yeah no i'm i'm very unhappy with them but i mean if you find that that's obviously the stores around here too they could be different in other places but they've really been upscaling goodwill here yeah ours has too yeah However, we have a local Lions Club that I donate a lot of stuff to all the time, and they have warehouses of stuff that they basically just rotate out of their actual building because they got more stuff than they know what to do with. But there's a lot of need here in this town as we're growing and as people are being uh, displaced from Austin proper. And so there's a lot of good stuff hanging around, and I love going in there. And I sadly, I work like four like, like two streets over from it and so like on this i i gotta like not go in there on my lunch break or else i'm bringing something else home and uh <laughs> but the, you, you can find a lot of good stuff there and as for kind of like pro tips or something usually ask the people that work there like because some of the people who know some of them just 
put the stuff up on there. But a lot of them who actually work there often know what might be in circulation or might be put away or in a different spot. Um, tell them what you're trying to do. They are a lot of times people just like us um, who do, they work at a thrift store. Obviously, they enjoy this kind of thing to a degree. And um, I don't know. I, I strike up some of the weirdest conversations with those people. <laughs> and we have a fun time. And um, so, do you ever like slip them five or ten bucks? Apparently, they're underpaid. No, well, actually, they're the people at the um, Lions Club are volunteers, and all the money goes to different um, things that the, uh, the the Lions Club are donating to at the time. So, um, if they have pro special projects for their areas, it's going to those projects. And so, I uh, I like that because I get to see the changes in my community for thrifting, and. Um, yeah. Now, outside of outside of thrift stores, some, there are Before some. Before go there, I, I want to post. Uh, say, yeah. Rita posts the caring place in Georgetown has some great deals. I used to live in Georgetown, and yes, the the caring place is an awesome store. That's why I say <laughs> you need to look around and know which ones are the good ones. Just yes. like Jack knows where he he needs to go. Austin is is a is difficult. But out, out in the out in the countryside in the smaller towns, um, there's a, there's some some thrift stores that are actually trying to service their communities. Um, yes, not just make a quick buck. So that's awesome. Also, okay. if you ever just want to just take a drive in Texas because Texas is so freaking huge, you can hit like three or four towns a day, depending on how you loop out of you know, wherever you're you're at. Every town has a junk store or some sort of all you know, consignment shop or something like that. And so I actually know the people who run the one in, in my little town back home. And I go in there as often as I can. And you'll find like those little towns don't they don't have a whole lot of volume of people like us looking for like these these certain straps or I need this exact thing. And so they probably have some that have been there four years and they're exactly what you need and they probably are from the 1800s <laughs> because they found it in great grandma's you know container somewhere or in her in her attic and now they don't know what it is or the history of it they just want it gone and you're like this is a strap from a civil war era musket yes i'm taking this i don't care if i need it or not i have people who have needs and um so <laughs> So my great grandmother's handmade doilies. Nobody <laughs> wants them anymore. Fifty cents. They come, in, they come in a glass. They come in a glass milk container. Yeah. Like as tall, it hits, I have that actually. That happened to me. I bought the whole thing of doilies and the massive glass. Um, has a glass lid with that like weird spring loaded latching mechanism on the top. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. oh yeah, yeah. It's a five gallon jug and of it's doilies. Glass. And it's a doilies. It has doilies in it. But I no, that's it. I didn't, I, interesting. Yeah. And so I still have the doilies. I couldn't get rid of the doilies. I need to have like a doily launcher or something. I mean, some, you, some way to like justify the doilies. Just seeing the amount of work that went into making those, I find amazing. Yeah, I just can't yeah. throw them away. And, but I mean, they're all like obviously made back in the 60s and 70s because they're all this garish green and orange. Oh. <laughs> mm. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, Rita, yeah, think it's she and Lawrence go to thrift stores when they're on vacation. Those are my people. Yeah, <laughs> I will I say mean, you go on work on work on work jobs. One of the um, back. I don't. Part of the reason I use Etsy is because I don't have the patience or the focus to do the trolling through the thrift stores like I used to. But I mean, back when I was, you know, back in the nineties, there's a, a and it's. I looked it up. It's still there. McCart Thrift in Fort Worth is huge. And the amount of club clothes of <laughs> goth gear that I managed to, and Victorian, neo Victorian type stuff that I managed to pull out of that store. So, yeah, if you're driving through Fort Worth, McCart Thrift is, I, and like I said, I looked it up. It's still there, it's still huge. And it's, it was a really good place to go. I spent a lot of, cause I would, went to college in our or TCJC. So when I would leave school, I would drive it was, McCart thrift is on my way home. So I'd stop there a couple of times a week and then go home. And I always came away with good stuff. I'm going to point it, point another one here before I forget. If you know any guys that work a lot with uh, like equestrians or horses or, or well, 
equestrians and horses, the same thing, uh, cattle, <laughs> any type of like rancher, ask them if they have any like broken equipment or broken chaps or something like that, because they'll be well worn leather that's perfect and all it needs is like a strap or something and they bought a new set and it's for their work they don't consider this a fun thing um but you can find some a lot of really cool gear that has been just worn through in one spot and you have to fix it in tears now and it's real leather and it's distressed already it's it's broken in and uh I found some chaps once, but they were assless. All chaps I are. knew that that was... <laughs> I was go. just waiting. For <laughs> All chaps are. <laughs> the moment you don't find assless chaps, they're, they're pants. pants. <laughs> they're leather <laughs> pants. <laughs> um, I mean... One source that people can consider, too, is uh, if you ever... If you know SCA, the Society mm -hmm. for Creative Anachronism, uh -huh. there's crossover especially with the leather working. So look yep. into, yeah, SCA leather workers. And SCA events are actually, if they're not, most of them are at most maybe five, ten dollars to get into an SCA event. And they prefer that you try to at least have some period garb, but you don't have to. You can go to an SCA event where they have, you know, the merchants are set up. And because I, I know that there's crossover because uh, mm -hmm. so, there's a leather worker at Steampunk November who does SCA events as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, my so wife it, used to be a part of it out in El Paso. She yeah. knows a lot of the the people around that that, yeah, around that so does that. Heck, we have like two two uh, Renaissance festivals between us here already yeah. too, and yeah, so, so literally one is yeah. twenty minutes here from Elgin. And yeah, so, yeah, we've got Scarborough up here. So the leather, yeah. the yeah, the leather workers for those are also because you want some you you want a big thick belt for not a heavy not a big price. <laughs> those belts are they are thick i mean yeah. okay so i know i overpaid for my for my um i'm like i'm gonna i'm gonna put the name i can't remember the name goes over your shoulder and holds your sword um Baldric. Baldric. yeah i paid a little more than I, <laughs> for that than i think i should have mainly because i didn't know what i was looking for or, or knew how to haggle at the time but um i mean i walked away with a hundred dollar sword and an eighty dollar pauldric i'm like I'm not, not mad. I still have it. I really like it. I just don't have a place to like. It doesn't fit the jack of today. It fit the jack of yesteryear. Yeah. But I may have to. I may have to pull that out. I just need a bigger hat. I really like. I need like a dark wing duck sized hat. That's what I need. <laughs> that's that's my whole love for hats. They came from Indiana Jones and dark wing duck. And if Great I can duck. fusion those together, it's the perfect hat for me. So I have another source. Oh. Um, going back to Blue Stockings, fantastic set of pouches on her belt. <laughs> Um, those are, you know, the, those are the top of the line, which I'm not affording. Um, but one step up from the thrift shop, you can go to like your local hardware store, like Home Depot mm -hmm. or, uh, Harbor Freight, which is these days experiencing the same issue that Goodwill is. They raised their price, so they're not really the thrifting place they used to be. But here's another belt. This is a, a workman's belt. That is especially long because you're supposed to wrap it twice. Yep. I, is it you're supposed to wrap it twice? I just assume that you know. Okay. Well, so hear me out. Or you can trim it. Yes, <laughs> that's true. Um, other than that, if you can wrap them twice, it's better. Um, no. More pouches. Yeah. But <laughs> another good thing is military um, leftover stores. Now, oh yeah, yeah, Army Navy stores and Army Navy yeah. stores. I found this really awesome bag that I carry with me all the time. It's I don't have it on me right now, but it was an ammo bag, and so it's got you know it has a little flap over the side, and it's got two little pockets on the front. It's kind of wide. Well, I hate putting something over my shoulder, and it has a shoulder strap. So I got me some um, rivets with the holes in them, the little ringlet rivets, and I punched holes in the sides of it, and I put. Um, the carabiners through them and I can latch it on my belt that way. And so for most steampunk people or leather people, this could be like, that sounds horrendous, but actually it, it works with my, it works with my costume very well. And so I latch it straight on my belt, which also has the ringlets 
because I have one of those long, thick belts that has the double holes in it that has the ringlets in it. Yeah. So I just strap it right on there, and it's perfect. And I don't have my hands are free. I can stick this, I can stick the thing I'm stealing or I'm bartering with in it, and I still have a hand for my pistol. And I have my my, my hands are free. It's perfect. I hate having my hands full at conventions yeah. or anywhere yeah. because if I can't do my character doesn't have. I, I have a thing about carrying things. So when someone hands me a bag, I'm just like. Get rid of the bag, throw the thing in my bot, you know, in my in my satchel, and uh, it's not a European soldier, sold, sold yeah, shoulder bag or anything, but uh, and it's and it's a black, it's made of um, really heavy jean material, but it hides really well on my, on the on the way the costume works. I know they can come in some like olive drab, but that just doesn't seem right either. But and I think it's. Finding anything Swiss military is fantastic. It like my goggles are actually uh, Swiss motorcycle riding goggles um, that fancy. you can buy. They're very fancy. They got like <laughs> they're they're glass, like actual glass, and they got like this little wire frame that latches in and around it. So it looks really cool. Um, and I found those for like twenty five dollars online at, and I was actually looking for tanker goggles because of watching Indiana Jones and looking at some of the German tankers. I'm just like, where do I get those? Those, those square ones like that. And it turns out that those are actually considered they're, they're Chinese uh, tanker goggles. And so couldn't at the time there was a run on those and I couldn't get a hold of any of them because a, the Chinese military was beefing up and B they became exceedingly popular because they're also the same ones that captain Robert has. Uh, oh, from Abbey yeah. Park. From Avenue Park, yeah, and he, I, it was a coincidence that I was looking for the same ones because I was I was watching Indiana Jones again, going, "Where am I? I got I, they got them from somewhere. I must be able to find them from somewhere." And uh, never, and that's one reason I ran across these. I'm like, I can't get those; they're sold out for like decades. And uh, all these look cool, <laughs> so I got well, them. And what you said though is also a big part of it is what are you going for? Yeah. What oh. is the look that you're what? I, I just pulled up a picture of Captain Robert. Uh, I have a pair of those. Those are Chinese snow goggles for tooting around in the snow. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they're really cool because they fold up and they just mm -hmm. they, they, they become really small. You slip right in your pocket. Okay. Yep. So you've those got are... a pair of them, but Jack can't get any. Well, that was also when I was looking years ago. Oh, okay. uh, I, got, I fell on my hat. I fell on these back when. Um, I couldn't find them. And so I, since then I've added some things. That's actually, you know, those, you know, when you buy like two things of margarita ju ju jugs and they come with that little thing in the middle that holds them together. <laughs> That's actually the, um, one of the pieces that holds the neck of the jug in there. I did that cause I wanted like a heads up display, but what I was really trying to show is that you can kind of see that this little wire band and little hooks here. And oh, there, it comes with a really nice, uh, elastic band. It's rubber, and it sits well on your eyes. Yeah. And I actually bought two sets. And I have a backup set just in case. And I've been actually considering doing something with it because I drilled holes in this one to put LEDs in and everything. And uh, <laughs> yeah, so I've, I've I've played around with them a little bit. Yeah, just building your character and figuring out what works for you. I and, think that's you ninety know. percent of it because I've spent yeah. a lot of money buying things that I don't necessarily need for my character. But you don't know what your character is, and so I think really it's like sitting down, going, "All right, it's my character mechanic. Okay, am I what? What kind of mechanic am I? Am I an engineer? Am I working on small things? Am I working on big things?" And then that really kind of starts narrowing your focus of what your character would normally carry, yeah. and um, like. I don't like, ha and then there, of course, then you have those little isms that are your character. Like my character, I don't like having my hands full. Like I'm kind of like the, the, the Tony Stark thing. Don't hand me things, but uh, <laughs> yeah. unless it's money, and I'll put it right in my pocket. Yeah. But so I think it really matters. Kind of like if you want a hat, what are you going to put on your hat? And then it kind of comes around the lines of what what would you if you're going to put goggles? Obviously. What type of goggles are you going to? Is it more gentlemanly? Are you going to be running around with you know horse carriages? Or are you going to be, um, you know, having to keep dust out of your eyeballs? Or is it the you know liquid chemicals or something? It all kind of rolls into. Well, actually, that's a that's an interesting way to just uh, go. Anyway, moving on. Uh, <laughs> also, by the way, Rita, me too. 
We were talking about that before the show started. Goggles. I want prescription cat's eye goggles. Yes. <laughs> but I don't know how to find someone to make those. I will pay the money. Just make me the goggles. <laughs> you know, it would be interesting to see if you could take a set of the goggles into a, a, a um, one of the, the people where they actually do grind the, uh, the lenses and see if there'd be a, a lens that fit. Most people I, don't have lenses this big anymore, though. That was kind of an 80s yeah, thing. Yeah, it's that would they be. Just, they start that way, and then they grind them to, to shape. Yeah, the lenses come in a certain way, and then they grind them to shape based on the um, on the frames. But mm -hmm. there, are some, there are some frames that you cannot get. Your, your prescription's not going to, especially like my prescriptions are really bad. So I need a little bit bigger, bigger frames now because I have an astigmatism in both eyes. And also... Mm -hmm. I should be wearing bifocals, but I refuse, <laughs> refuse to. <laughs> so my some... eyes are, yeah, they're really bad. So some some prescriptions you just can't get in certain frames or possibly goggles. I don't know. I've never tried it. So. <laughs> Here's something that I always thought was interesting. There's a cheap, someone came up with a cheap alternative for, for uh, prescription lenses for third world countries. And what it is, is there's these little like syringes on the sides and you can pump in uh, a gel in between two pieces of plastic that changes the depth perception between the two plastic lenses in the um, in the glasses. That sounds and like it would be more ex They're cheap. Really? They were cheap. <laughs> they could buy them by the thousands for very little hmm. money. That's when they were looking at like mass production for third world countries for just glasses. They looked yeah. weird but because they had like little tiny syringes on the sides where you could adjust the, the depth mm -hmm. perception. But I'm sitting here thinking like that would be so cool if you could do that to a set of goggles. <laughs> because <laughs> i know what i want but i have, like i said they're the kind of thing you have to find someone to custom make it and i don't know how much that would cost me so yeah. and also how much would i wear them i mean especially now goggles that everything's shut heavy. down yeah that and goggles get heavy like i don't like wearing yeah. my goggles of course i'm half blind when i take my glasses off these days totally blind so, <laughs> so yeah. they're only there for aesthetic reasons which is already kind of annoying me a bit because i'm like <laughs> But we all need our steampunk accessories. I'll just I'll just glue some gawk and gears on. It'll be fine. <laughs> Every time I say that, I hear that song in my head. I know, I know, and I'm not against it. Like, oh. if you're enjoying yourself, you want to be in the aesthetic, and you think it looks pretty, go for it. I'm not. Maybe I'm not. Oh, regarding yeah. pouches, pouches. Uh, yes, pouches. I was talking about uh, going to Harbor Freight, get this enormous leather belt that apparently you strap around twice, and it came Maybe. with. Three similar to this, like mm -hmm. See, those pouches. are awesome. Those are awesome. And the, I mean, the whole thing cost me twenty twenty five dollars. That's not bad Just at all. Put it on, go roll in the dirt them, for like, a bit, like, and you and your one of them had a big ring to right. hold your like hammer or whatever. Mm -hmm. And you could put all kinds of things in here. Um, and it's just a matter of well, how much stuff do I want to hold? <laughs> yeah, how much do you want strapped around your waist? <laughs> Keys are very steampunk. But I like to have things that I know will do something. So here is a bizarre looking key you can find at the hardware store. Do you know what this is? It's for the water main, isn't it? Yes, it's for turning off the water at your house. I nice. found that out last year when my landlord handed us one just in case our we our pipes froze. <laughs> yeah. But it came in handy when your toilet started overflowing. It, it, it doesn't actually <laughs> turn the water off. It it unlocks the manhole cover. The manhole uh, cover, yes. Yeah, yeah, so the valve. Yeah. There's another key. For turning the water off, <laughs> yeah, the big one, right? It's a process. Strap that well, one to your, that your actually bag. Did something? I bought it because I thought it was a fun prop, and then I had water leak at my house. I'm like, I have this thing. We did. I have the key. <laughs> Let me dig in my steampunk costume so I can get the water turned off. I like it, decorative and functional. <laughs> yeah, that's and that's what I that's what you always go. For. That's what I try to go for is decorative and functional, and um, it's 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 a, it's a difficult balanced strike, and that's one reason I think it's very important to kind of like, well, what is your character going to be doing? And that's why yeah. I have like chopsticks on mine because I couldn't eat at some conventions and find like a, a fork. So I'm like. <laughs> Where my chopsticks and just pull them on my hat, go clean them off real quick, and then I have food and they I stick it back in my hat and they look very aesthetically oriental. And so and I like the look of that. And I want to I want to add more of the that kind of that kind of feel to my to my costume. But it's it's a useful bit that's immediately there. I have a pair of chopsticks, which no one 
carries chopsticks. What is that? And so it's it's very unique for me to pull out chopsticks, especially if we're doing like a LARP moment or if or if I'm just bored, I'll just take them out and start messing with them. And it's just it it fits and it's it's funny. Um, it's it is so difficult to have a conversation about this sometimes because you can only really relate to like what you've done or your, your friends have done. And it's hard to like help extrapolate it for someone else without them making the decisions on it. Yeah. Cause I've done panels on this and usually I have a t- like, you know, 10 to 20 questions. You ask yourself like, how much money does your character have? Are you wealthy? Are you, are you normally wealthy? Are you normally not wealthy? You know, are you, you know, you don't, it doesn't really matter male or female anymore, but it, you know, it's the whole, like, you know, kind of what class of citizen, what is your main focus? Where do you find yourself ending up? Whether your character's flaws. And at that point in time, you can kind of cultivate a very loose toolkit already. Yeah. And like, well, I had a very specific image though, because if you look up the radical militant librarian mm-hmm. image, that was, it's based on world war two propaganda. Yeah. So it's it's got that look to it, and so that was I had a very specific image. I liked the way that she because she had the you know the stars and stripes on her costume and the little beret, and so that's what I went with. I took that image, and from there I got um I had a dr- I had the dress. I got bloomers that were red and white. You know, I got the, the dress that was blue with the the white stars, and she's wearing a little banner that because it's um it's from an issue years ago with librarians of the Patriot Act. So she's wearing a banner that says, read me my rights. And I got a little, little sash that says, read me my rights on it. So I had a very specific image that I was working with that I wanted to steampunk it. And since it was already that, you know, early diesel punk type propaganda image, it wasn't that hard to transfer it from there and, you know, take it back. Yeah. Take it back. So it's, it's sometimes you just, you start building and, you know, matching pieces together and sometimes you have a specific image of what you want to do and who you want to be and you know that outfit wasn't super comfortable so the steampunk librarian has evolved a little bit to a skirt with books and a tweed vest and it's a lot more comfortable that way (laughs) you know (laughs) it just works better but i think when fax met me when fax and i met for the first time face to face was steampunk november and i was wearing that i had the full skirt with the the blue and the, I had the stars and stripes on me and people kept asking me if I was steampunk wonder woman I'm like, no. you know I was thinking about it the other day nope. and yes I did beat you there too did we yeah in 2017 yes I was there really I am uh, <laughs> that was like five years ago <laughs> my kid was two at the time that was so long ago i don't remember okay well you know hopefully maybe we'll get to have steampunk november again this year and we can oh that'd be nice we could do a live live from steampunk november thing we get like real close together with the camera on the phone we're like (laughs) i like spilling each other's drinks on each other trying to hi we're live and hammered at steampunk november (laughs) that right there will be the title Oh, yes. Yeah. Is that yes. the picture you're talking about? Yes. That's what I used for um, my... What, that's the idea that I based my costume on. And I actually have... Let me see. Um, kind of our steampunk Wonder Woman. <laughs> it, it, yeah, I did not mean for it to come out that way. But uh, let me... I'll, I can show you all the finished costume. For, or for those that haven't seen the finished costume. Um can i am i allowed to share sure yeah push the button okay because we had a problem last time let's see if it works okay let's see i'll show you how the costume actually oh never mind it's not working actually i know what i can do hang on just a second i will just share it with you're gonna give us a link Oh, no, I was going to drop it in there. I dropped it into the messenger, our messenger. Oh. So Thax can share it. Screen share doesn't like to work for me on this. Weird. Yeah. Uh, Did it not pop? Oh. Oh, Look at that. 
there. Here. Yeah, the dress doesn't really fit anymore because, again, five years ago, <laughs> I need to get it altered. But I was really proud of that. I worked with the someone on Etsy to get that done. Nice. Yeah. She was really, she's a really good seamstress. Would you like me to try? <laughs> sure. Okay, let's see here. Share. Share screen. Share this screen. Oh, God. There it is. Boop. There we are. Let's see if we, I can't make it any bigger. Dang it. Okay, well, that's that's it. Um, <laughs> I can, I can, maybe I can make it bigger if I played with it. Uh, Open up paint. <laughs> Put in the lot. Post energy. it in paint. <laughs> and we zoom. Yep, so that there was it. <laughs> yeah, so I, I took the, the radical militant librarian and I steampunked her up a little bit and I got the little gloves and the boots. I've got little grain, brown granny boots. You can't, in this picture, I couldn't find the other one where you can see, but there's red and white bloomers underneath the skirt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the whole thing was my steampunk version of that image. And yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. Like I said, I can't, it doesn't fit anymore. I need to get it altered. But yeah, I had a specific idea. So, you know, if you come at it from a specific idea or if you're coming at it from, you know, airship pirate you know scavenging things as you come across them i mean that's you know that also that is a great way to do it because you're building up your person your persona a piece at a time mm -hmm. so i don't feel like you ever have to rush because you'll end nope. up with a yeah like 80 dollars stuff that you bought that you'll never wear because it doesn't fit your character or it doesn't fit you anymore or it doesn't fit you anymore <laughs> either yeah that's something i'm it's running not, into with my it's with hard my it's hard to fit to uh to not want to get all the things right now which is what i did yeah i rushed and i got everything well if you have that yeah. image in your mind that's one thing i, I had the image and i had the image. student loan refund <laughs> and, the stu and the money yes. that's exactly what you're supposed to use it on too by the way also hey. go over to steamchest.com and buy my <laughs> your student loan refund <laughs> oh, but, but uh yeah i mean like i said i ended up with an outfit that you know five years later doesn't necessarily fit because it's, there's no room for expansion in it. So that's also the other thing. Pieces are better than an entire matching, mm. you know, build onto it with different pieces as you go. Oh, steampunk little bow peep. I love that. <laughs> that's going to be fantastic. I, I want really to see what you're going to your, really your walking see stick. <laughs> your, um, what's it called? A crack? No crack. Crook. There we are. Crook. Shepherd's crook. crook. Yeah, need a shepherd's crook. Steampunk shepherd's crook. <laughs> Is it going to be like a big Swiss army knife of things you can pop out the end? <laughs> like, seriously, Rita, we need to know more. <laughs> <laughs> the need to know more intensifies. <laughs> We're all waiting with bated breath. <laughs> well, we have reached an hour what? already. We have. Wow. We're actually a little bit over. And we really haven't even, I mean, we've just scratched the surface on the kind of accessories that I was hoping we could talk about tonight. Sorry. So we'll have to come back to this again. There's plenty of room for... Join us next week for, like, amulets, necklaces, jewelry, and <laughs> underpants. <laughs> More underpants. Why is it with underpants with you? <laughs> <laughs> I will wear my bloomers next week. Don't just you guys you. wear underpants under your costumes? Or, or don't you wear underpants under you. your costumes? I have, important, important I have bloomers. I will wear them next week just for you. You won't be able to see them. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you can think I about them. <laughs> They're red and white, and they have little ruffles at the bottom uh, around the, the ankles. So. Leaving little to be, to be thought about. <laughs> So we want to thank our patrons <laughs> at this point. <laughs> a shout out to the Dowager Duchess Claire Bear, Jenny and Ryan Shaver, Kitty Vincent, and Rita and Lawrence Allen, who go thrifting on their vacations, which is awesome. Thank you guys for for uh, 
meeting us at patreon.com and uh, buying us a beer, uh, which is actually being used to to host our podcast. Um, Use this wonderful program that is right up here. <laughs> well, StreamYard, yes, is allowing us to stream here, but we're also uh, on texasteamaconnection.podbean.com uh, which is, yeah, we, we have to pay for them to hold all of our episodes there. Um, we're on Facebook, obviously, the Texas Steampunk Connection. If you're watching us right now, that's where we are. Uh, you can email us at texassteampunkconnection at gmail.com. We're on Twitter, thanks to Blue Stocking. You can find us at TXSteamConnect1. Uh, and we are on YouTube and Rumble, thanks to Jack. His Rumble team. popping up here in just a That's second. Subscription box. Uh, so we're trying to be everywhere you might be looking for us. Um, the music at the beginning of the show is from zapsplat.com. Um, and if you're listening to the podcast, it's probably playing right now. Uh, <laughs> that, uh, that about covers it as far as uh, our thanks to all of our patrons and followers. Um, Thanks for tuning in with us. Uh, and anything you guys had to have to to add to this for tonight? Uh, if you liked what we uh, had to say about uh, thrifting and finding costumes, like I said, we're just scratching the surface. Um, tell us what you'd like to hear about next, or uh, tell us you didn't care about it. Whatever, uh, you know. Give us Drop a comment. Feedback. Hate us, love us. Don't you know? Just just but give us some feedback here. <laughs> Talk to us, please. Yeah, we, we enjoy it. I, otherwise, I'm just at work all day. That's no fun. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Distract me from my readings, y'all. I really need it. I'm reading 15 sources a week. Please talk to me. And I thought I was, I thought I was bad for me. I'm just selling life insurance. <laughs> if you guys need any life insurance and you live in Texas, give me a call. I'd rather sell to people who are entertaining and enjoy you can get life insurance in five minutes or less by contacting Jack. There you go. <laughs> All right. Well, until next time, two weeks from today, mind your gauges. Mind your gauges.